Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, video. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be taking a look at about 90% of the helmets in my collection as of January 12th, 2018. As you may know, this is like my main focus in collecting, always has been. And I've made a bunch of other Helmets of the World videos, but never really done a slideshow video of most of my collections. So I'll narrate, sit back, and enjoy. First one is my restored German model 1916 Stahlhelm. Um, this thing, the shell is original, everything but the shell is a repro. You can see the liner there is a reproduction, but I tried to keep it as original as possible and the paint job and such. Same with this model 1917 Stahlhelm, which is also an original shell, size 66, and the liner and the chin strap are reproductions. So there's those, and now we'll move on to more World War I stuff. Uh, the French model 1915 Adrian helmet with artillery badge on the front, and original liner. This is in great shape, and it actually fits me, size 60 centimeters. Now we've got the U.S. Model 1917 Brody helmet that was used from 1917 till the 1930s. And this one's in almost mint condition, unissued, and it's one of the prized possessions of my World War One collection. The Italian 1916 Brody helmet. Um, these are very hard to find, very uncommon, especially with a liner as in, as in good a condition as this one is. Now this next one is my M1917 Austro-Hungarian helmet. I kind of botched the paint job. I'll be redoing that, but the shell's a whopping size 68. So I like this. And the Repro Liner from Prairie Flower Leather Company. My original M35 German double decal um, HIA helmet, or Army helmet. So if you haven't seen the video on that, I made an entire video dedicated to this. It's kind of a unique story, pretty cool. I had to do some investigating, um, but it's my original example and I love it. Uh, here we've got the Swedish model 1921 parentheses 18 helmet with the badge on the front and original three pad liner system. We'll be going through some more Swedish helmets here, so brace yourselves. Uh, model 1937 in original configuration with the three uh, leather pad lining system. And now we're going to be moving on to the Swedish M1937 65 variation one, I call it, with the leather chin strap. Um, these are very interesting. You can see right there, it's the same as the 3765, just with a leather chin strap. We always think of the 3765s as something like this, where you've got the canvas chin strap with the uh, new liner system. But I call this one variation two of the M3765 Swedish helmet. Here we've got the Bulgarian M1936A helmet in original configuration. The liner is all original. It's a little bit stiff, but nevertheless, really hard to find. And it's in my size. Now we've got the M1936B. Same story as the Model A. It's in my size. It's original. The liner and everything. It's a World War II configuration paint job. Which is pretty cool. This is my restored uh, Romanian M39 helmet. Without the front badge. It's actually a Cold War liner. But I uh, painted it up to be the World War II color and configuration. Next we've got the Soviet SSH-40 helmet. Now this is just a great example. This was made in the 1950s, but it's exactly the same as the World War II variation. It's a nice liner there. I got the uh, Finnish Zolberg helmet, the one that was made in Finland when the Russians thought it was theirs, and then after the Russian Revolution, Finland just started using these for their military. These are super uncommon, and I'm really lucky and glad to have one. Now I've got the Swiss model 191840 with the nice rough black paint on it, and the uh, three-quarters liner band right here. Really cool helmets. I love these things. They're getting harder to find. Here's the reversible 1930s through like 60s camel cover on it. And the late 1950s through the 70s um, Liebemuster Alpenflage cover. Now here's a West German M1962 steel helmet. And it's got a nice liner in it that actually fits me. Pretty interesting thing. And uh, luckily they went to Kevlar pretty quick after they introduced the uh, uh, Flectarns, so there's only a very few number of those covers, and they're all in great shape. So, the single decal Luftwaffe M42 helmet, very small size, but nevertheless original and really cool. And now we're moving on to another Axis helmet, the Italian M33 helmet. This one was reissued and reused for a long time. Checking out that liner, you can see why. Pretty interesting, I love this helmet, really cool. Now we've got the Czechoslovakian 1930 helmet. In the original kind of uh, brown color. It's got the three pad liner system. A lot of these were sent to uh, Spain in the 1930s. And that's where you get this. It's the same helmet. The Czechoslovakia 1930. Except this one's got the two holes poked in the front for the badge. So this was more than likely using the Spanish Civil War based on that and the paint. Speaking of Spain, we've got the Spanish Model Z here. The reproduction badge on the front. This is a really cool helmet. Obviously designed off the German M42. But there are some very apparent differences. 
Here we've got the finished model, 1940-55. These were used for a long time until they started using the uh, Swedish M37 style in the 1960s. There's a liner there. Now we're back to another uh, Swedish M37, but I don't know what this is all about because check out this liner. I've never seen a liner like that on a, a 1937. So that's why I put it in its own little category. Not like there's any categories. Another M37. This is kind of what the Finnish ones would have looked like in most of the Swedish ones. They were all of drab, no decals. So this is what have been, would have been used up until they replaced them with the uh, Kevlar composite variants. I got the Swedish model M26 or M29, debatable, um, 65. So same story as the 37s. Got the same style liner and stuff in the 60s, but they still used them. Here's the Romanian M1973-80, denoted by the uh, lack of the badge on the front. And there's the liner, very similar to the World War II design, but it's uh, been updated and refined. This one's a pretty rare one, uh, the S S Romanian 1973 Airborne Helmet. See the liner right there? It's pretty interesting. Um, and speaking of airborne helmets, we've got the Polish WZ-63, which is the airborne helmet used by Poland and East Germany through the Cold War. The liner right there. This thing's tiny, and I cannot wear it. So <laughs> there's that. And we got the East German M1956-76 or 75 or whatever. It's got the uh, updated liner in it that everybody's pretty familiar with because they got surplused out in this configuration quite a bit. Here's the rain hood uh, on the helmet as a camouflage cover because it doubled as that. Next, we're going to move on to the French M1951 helmet. So this is uh, kind of a pattern after the US M1, as you can see with the liner, but it's still slightly different. Next is the French F1 helmet, introduced in 1978. Mine is in, like, unissued condition. I love it. First year production. And then in the next slide right here, you're going to be able to see the uh, French CCE camouflage cover. Um, this helmet and cover was used through the 1990s. Portuguese M40 helmet. Very rare, very hard to find. Not a lot of these in the U.S., especially in the M40 configuration. Like this, with the three-pad liner system. Um, most of them that you're going to find are like this. The uh, Portuguese M4063, which has got like a U.S.-style liner in it and uh, was made for the colonial wars in Africa. Here we've got a pretty cool Hungarian M1970 helmet. Uh, this is uh, one that I kept just because it's in rough shape and it's got a letter that's still addressed to the soldier's family. And I haven't opened it, nor will I ever. And here's a Hungarian M1970 or M1950 slash 70 is what I personally call it. It's a Hungarian M1950 helmet that was updated into the 1970 configuration. I thought it was pretty cool. Hungarian M90 steel helmet in unissued condition. This was still in the original paper when I got it. Um, you can see that it's just immaculate. It's a really cool piece, I think. Now we've got the Dutch KNIL steel helmet that was captured and reissued by the Germans in World War II due to the paint and the German M31 liner. Um, ad adaptation. Very rare helmet. Really glad to have that. Here's a Yugoslavian M59 helmet. Different than the 5985 which will be shown next with soldier graffiti. Uh, Popak means cricket in Bosnian or Serbian or something like that. I forgot. My buddy told me and he's a Serbian. I just can't remember which language it is. Anyway, you notice the US style liner in that one and then here's the 5985 which you're very familiar with. These are everywhere. It's got like the later kind of weird US style to it and it doesn't have... Uh, it's much to the liner. It's more synthetic. Here's the M89 camouflage cover for the 59 and 5985 helmet. Now we move on to the Iraqi M80 helmet. Now this is a fiberglass helmet that was uh, used in the first Gulf War and if you want to call it the second Gulf War or the Iraq War in 2003 to 2011. Here's the Iraqi M90 helmet, which was introduced right before the first Gulf War. It's made out of like this Wana Kevlar composite material. You can go check out the video on that and the big rubber gasket to protect the edge. So it doesn't end up like this helmet, which is also an M90, Iraqi, that doesn't have the rubber on the edge, and you can see the edges kind of cracked up and stuff because it's a very brittle material. It's really a neat helmet. I really like them. Now you got the Czech M1952 slash whatever it was, the chin strap and liner it was kind of updated in the 80s. These are so common, and uh, yeah, everyone's got one of these. Uh, the Soviet SSH-68 helmet, designed or implemented in 1968, obviously, and used through the time where they started using composite helmets. The most notably used in Afghanistan, of course. Now you got the Swiss Model 1971 steel helmet. These are very common, yet not so common anymore in the U.S. Everybody wants them. They're very well made, even though they're not ballistically that great, as you can see in my ballistic test. There's the Liebermuster or um, Alpenflage cover for the Swiss M1971. Here's an Austrian M1958 helmet, a almost direct clone of the US M1. A lot of US 
M1 shells and parts were used, as you can see from here. Does direct ripoff, different materials, different color. Here's the Austrian M1975 helmet. Same kind of shell and everything, but more Austrian liner style like that, you can see. Um, very cool. This one's almost any issued in my size. Here's a World War II configuration US M1 helmet. Uh, it's got a high pressure liner in it, which means like pretty much fiberglass, which is the most common. They're thin yet really hard. You got a Vietnam era US M1C airborne helmet, as you can see from the uh, airborne um, A yokes, chin strap, and then the snaps on the regular chin strap in the liner. And we got an Israeli M1 helmet. There's no official designation on these. Late 1960s, they used these and uh, kind of put their own spin on it. This is my example. It's in great shape. Uh, pretty cool. I love it. The Polish WZ67 helmet. Now, these were updated in the 80s, but this one's still in the 67 configuration. Pretty neat helmets. Very common, and uh, I like them a lot. Now, we're getting into our composite helmets. So, right here, we've got my personal one that I kept. The British Mark VI Ballistic Nylon Helmet. This one's got soldier graffiti on it. It's got Born to Kill written on the left side and uh, peace sign and all that stuff. Liners used. Very comfortable, though. And I decided to keep the uh, cover that was on it as well. It's very interesting kind of bushcraft soldiery going on there. And then we've got the nice Mark VII British Kevlar helmet. And this one's been used. It smelled like Afghanistan or Iraq, and it sure looked like it's been there. Then you got the MTP camouflage cover for the Mark VII. Now, moving on, we've got the uh, German Schubert uh, B826 helmet. And this is the current issue for a lot of European countries. You got the nice comfy liner system in there. I really like this helmet a lot. One of my favorite composite helmets. Uh, the Fleck Turn cover for it. And I've got the uh, Austrian Bundeswehr um, Olive Drab cover for it, too. Not a lot of people have those. Those are available in my shop. Shameless little plug. Uh, Polish WZ93 Kevlar helmet. So these are Poland's first attempt at becoming more modernized and weren't really that great, but they eventually evolved into something better. And you get the South African model 1987 Kevlar helmet with riot shield lugs and the nice simple liner on there. A lot of these were exported to other countries, but they wouldn't be in this brown color. You got the U.S. Personal Armored System Ground Troop or Pazget helmet, M88, and uh, nice small size and great condition from 1987. Here we've got the uh, upgraded version of the Polish helmet, the Polish WZ2000 Kevlar helmet. These perform great in ballistic tests as I did. Uh, nice comfy liner system and really sweet camouflage pattern. I love the Pantera pattern. It's just amazing stuff, I think. But there's that. And then my ACH. It was the one that I had when I was in the military, and it's now part of my collection. So got the cover and everything and the actual helmet. So that's pretty cool. And then the newest helmet that I own is the US ECH Enhanced Combat Helmet. Jeez. And this one's a really unique one. It's a Trials one. It's got the sensor and everything in it for trauma. And that's my collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. If you got any questions, go onto my Facebook page and ask. Or you can become a supporter on Patreon for a dollar a month by clicking the link in the description, and you can ask on there. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. A lot of people have asked you know, for me to make a video of my entire collection. It's about as close as we're going to get right now. Maybe someday I'll do the whole thing, but uh, right now, this is what you got. So let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.